Okay, so um, we've got the, the clean signal going direct to the DI. You've got the base EQ so that you've got like a, a master EQ for the room. Yeah, and it's it's separated from the DI so that that's not interfering. With obviously, what sound gets, so yeah. you can do his own thing. Okay. And then it goes into the gig rig, mm -hmm. and I've got all my patches here for different songs. Mm -hmm. I've generally set it up so that <coughs> I'll set it to the mode one. Right. So each click changes the mm -hmm. changes the patch. Mm -hmm. um, <coughs> and I've got. So distortions mainly down the bottom, so I've right. got like the distortion, then distortion with delay, mm -hmm. and this distortion with the, with the delay, okay. this distortion with delay, and then my delay at the end. And then the top is a bit more sort of modulation based effects okay. and, and some sort of um, different combinations. You can see like there's a few dip switches up on some of these. Mm -hmm. And g generally down here I've just got the only other dip switches up are like a, a noise gate or uh, the delay. Okay, so you you bring the noise gate in and out for specific things that require it. It's not on all the time. No, because it 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 it, it, it really only seems to work when it's running flat out. Right. And that for any trailing effects of just delays just or, kills it. or yeah, it, yeah yeah yeah, it, yeah it's it's on there. It's not not required. So. Sure. Yes, and then um it comes out here to this loop pedal mm -hmm. which I use for uh, alpha omega. To do, to, to to loop a bass part and then play over the top, you know, okay. in the break in the sort of breakdown bit, yeah. breakdown. I don't know. Did that the quiet bit after the heavy bit. Do you want to hear that one? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Just close this. Up. Actually, I might get the other bass for that. Is that cool? Yeah. Sounds better. So I'll be. Um, It's really interesting because the overdrive sound that you've got with the m melody line, there's a, a higher frequency uh, where the sawtooth wave is that just pokes its head yeah. over the riff, and yeah. it's fantastic. Yeah, it's just a subtle. You see that that one's just the boss overdrive, and I'll just use that for like a slight, uh, slight distorting of the mm. sound. That's not too. See, it's like. This is a lot clean compared to like all those ones. Right. It's it's really about figuring out and just sort of working to make sure that when you, you get, it sounds usable, mm. that you just trust your ears. Mm. And um, you know where there's there's a couple of freq there's two frequencies I sort of have to watch out for. It's the low like 100 and 120 right. sort of range. Mm -hmm. Which seems to work better for the guitars. So sure. If I get out of the way there, then we're not both pushing it, which mm -hmm. this one wants to automatically. Right. And then there's around like two, three k. Okay. If I back that off a bit, I get it's not as abrasive, mm. and it's like a sharper pull there. And again, there's a lot of guitar frequencies in that area as well. Yeah, and, and the only thing is though, it's um, those frequencies do sound good distorted, so. Mm. But in a recording studio, they sound better. Sure. But live, they can whistle and complain. So excellent. Now, if I look at something like um, for Aeons, mm -hmm. this is the other thing I do. I turn the volume down on the loop station. So if I don't accident, I don't accidentally hit it and start a loop of something I'm playing. But if I do, it's, it's silence. It's, okay. Yeah. So you do that like mid between songs and things. Yeah, I'll, I'll do it. I'll, generally, Nick will, will okay. actually turn it up for me. Right. Yeah, he's, he's good. 
Handy. Handy, Nick. And um, so, yeah, so if I go for this, so if I, from the second verse type thing, when I tracked it, I had this, this sort of uh, it undulator sort of effect. This right. Sort of sits well, thickly, but it's not, there's no real bass going on at that point. particular delay speed delays it uh, five quavers relative to the BPM so that I hit it do the do, 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 go to the next one yep get the trail of the one repeat and then mm -hmm. go to there and it cuts off any more trails from that one now Amazing. That's yeah yeah there. so it's wow so I mean you really go intricate to the detail mm. of the parts that you've done I just, that's fantastic yeah it's a it's really important to us to to go as far as we can but still have like a certain uh, you know allowance i suppose for it's still live it's live yeah, right? yeah. yeah and what you do in the studio doesn't have to be exactly the same mm. it can as long as it's encompassing that and serving the live show mm. that's 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 all it needs to do right amazing Amazing. Yeah, because I mean, we're in the studio. I've got, I've got like multiple lines with multiple distortion lines going on sometimes. Mm. And um, like for Simple Boy, for instance, that was like a couple of distortion tones. So let's talk about Simple Boy for a second, because um, certainly uh, among the bass player Illuminati, it's one that gets discussed a lot. So your approach to that song and the tones that you used on yep. that song. Because it's one that you're quite upfront for. Yeah, it's um, so it's sort of. We, we were jamming a lot of that, and we developed some of the parts, you know, quite a mellow sort of jam. But then, right. when Steve started doing that beat, one time, and, and we we're like, that's wicked, and that that could probably go with that other stuff we were just doing. Mm. So we um, sort of started playing around, and and I just was doing this bass part that was just really, just thumbing along mm -hmm. behind him, and we. Uh, just ran it into some plug-in that just made it all over the top. And then uh, when we tracked it live uh, for, the, for the studio, we did an amp distortion. Right. It was actually a lot subtler. And then we couldn't work out which one was more effective. Mm. Then we did this genius thing where we just put them together and they worked perfectly. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, it's, yeah, sometimes it's you can't get... A natural sort of naturally get a tone like that. Sure, from just it's got to be. Thing. Yeah, it needs to be crafted, crafted. Yeah, yeah. sent off into different areas and had different uh, paint jobs, so to speak. And how do you approach that live then? Well, then I I came across this pedal, the XXL, the Tech Twenty One XXL, mm -hmm. and that sounded pretty close for right. what for what it was, and it gave the um the ridiculousness of the of the distortion and it sort of serves that. Can we hear that? Uh, yeah. Um, it does sound better at la louder volumes. But I'm sure. Uh. That's awesome. Yeah. I mean, and, and again, the, all that attack is retained, you know, and, and the, the overdrive frequencies are just sat in the right spot, but mm. you, that really punches through. It's amazing. Yeah, I mean, it's, it, yeah, it's, if, if, you're, if you're sitting at home, I guess, and you're, you're working on sounds in your bedroom, mm. they always sound a lot different to when you're doing it with something in mind of where to sit and everything. Sure. And I think that you can get used to it being the best that you could make it for your own ears and your own 
as you when you're the only when you are the audience as well. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And you kind of have to get you have to kind of consciously try to not just overdo it sometimes, mm. just to go back to what feels comfortable. Mm. Um, okay, new day. Um, if you can take us through the sounds and and, uh, and how I put it, yeah, yeah okay, that'd be great. So, well, that song sort of came together quite uh, slowly but organically in a way, mm. and um, generally there was a lot of parts on that where I guess being a cleaner song as well. It, it, there's a lot of work between myself and Hoss and Drew, mm. where it's almost sometimes a bit of a three-part sort of guitar work. That's a consistent thread in a lot of your tunes though. The the textures that you all create, there does seem to be that running thread where um, you do weave these incredible sounds together. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, and obviously yeah, New Day is a very good example of that. Um, yeah, so there's a couple of like, this this part that I've got with, um, with Hoss doing his tapping thing. That To, fun to ride that with him because he, he came up with that that tapping part mm -hmm. first and I sort of I think I was the only one in the room at the time and I just started playing that underneath and yeah it just sort of comes together like that. Fantastic. Okay and we are if we I are. may. <clears throat> yep okay let me change bases. Uh, I think we've covered most of the questions from the guys on Facebook just before we get to we are um, and someone had said, with all this stuff going on, how do you manage to keep your signal path so clean? And oh, gig rig. <laughs> there we go. So Definitely the gig rig. Gig rig. Yeah, it's, um, it's great because like, with all this stuff that's here, all, all the things you can see, when I'm there, it's just basically going in one side and coming out the other. And with very, like, nothing changing. Sure. Great. But we are going to sort you out with the G2. Awesome. <laughs> um, yeah, so we are. Yeah, so uh, this is, like I was showing uh, before, sort of developed from another riff. And mm -hmm. um, I've got this, uh, this is the tremolo I've picked on there. There's actually two tremolos on there. <clears throat> and this particular one has a sort of drive function on it mm -hmm. as well. And when we do it live, we, we, we're doing a MIDI click sync, like, like I was explaining, yep. you know, the tremolos don't always start. So, so it would start the same time as Steve was starting so that we wouldn't be... And, and it just invariably couldn't seem to get it to work. So what I found was I put it on the manual setting mm -hmm. where it's already got the BPM and the click would be coming in and I just tap it. <laughs> Awesome. And what are the overdrive sounds that you've got in there? Is it the boss again? So I'm using this setup here. Right. This is just a, uh, the, a boss going into a Blackstone, mm -hmm. which is from New York. And I actually turn this one off halfway through when I get to the... Um, Again, uh, actually, where is it? it sort of goes through this bit. I smack the strings a bit up. Sort of thing, and it mm -hmm. goes off, and then this octave. And then we're in the 
outro, I've got it linked up to this guy. And um, this, in this case, is just acting as a volume. So that right. live, live, we can do a live fade out like it is. Oh, okay, ready. yeah, great. to be at the end so it's so there's no trails so yeah, yeah before i had it earlier on in the chain and it was just taking away the the, the grunt sure of the distortion and becoming cleaner and then suddenly dropping off of course because so. that changes the game structure for yeah. games yeah awesome yeah well that's amazing so thank you so much for coming in today it's been absolutely brilliant and uh, re yeah really appreciate you taking the time yeah, thank and you. uh off to the gig tonight it's going to be awesome cannot wait and uh, yeah, so signing off for that pedal show. See you soon. Thanks, guys.